Hey everyone, welcome back to Fish FX. Today we're actually going to go over pH. Um, something that I struggled with for several years. Um, I think it was just because of the lack of knowledge. I didn't really take the time to learn uh, what it takes to actually have stable pH. So I'm actually just going to share a couple things with you. Uh, what I've learned and uh, what I've done to fix my pH issue. So currently my tank pH is about 8.26 to 8.31. It stays within that range. Uh, if I do a really big water change, it might drop to like 8.21 and then work its way back up as the dosing increases. So, dosing. If you're dosing unequal parts of calcium and alkalinity, you're doing it wrong. You should always dose equal parts of both. Um, I made the mistake, you know, we all make mistakes. We're all gonna learn, that's why we're here. Um, I made the mistake of dosing the wrong two-part amounts. So I used to dose like 20 milliliters more of alkalinity than calcium for the longest time. And uh, yeah, it's not a good thing. Your DKH goes through the roof, your corals bleach, uh, and things just grow like shit. So, I'm glad I learned that early on. So, dosing. Make sure you're dosing equal parts of calcium and alkalinity. And make sure that your magnesium is within a good range. Okay? Now, uh, the problem that most people have is CO2. When CO2 is in the air around the tank and or in the tank, the pH will drop. So, the more oxygenated your tank is, on the other hand, the, uh, the pH will be, you know, at a normal range, depending on your alkalinity. So, moving into the CO2 thing. Now, what, one thing that I did in particular to fix my CO2 issues, I took a line and I connected it outside with a filter on it, a low carbon filter, and ran it directly to my protein skimmer. So my protein skimmer just pulls cold, fresh air from outside directly into the water column, mixing it with bubbles and uh, hence oxygenating the water. Another thing that you can do is have mass amount of uh, Clerpa, Chetomorphine, uh, whatever macroalgae you choose to grow in your refugium, and you can have that on a uh, you know a 12 to 16 hour cycle, and uh, it could uh, you know an opposite cycle of your tank, preferably. Um, just you know, most people, a lot of people uh, have ran uh, refugiums 24 hours a day. Now the only problem with that is uh, you know everybody needs a chance to relax, and so don't plants. Um, so I'd recommend maybe a 12 to 16 hour window. I run mine at 16 hours. And it's, uh, most of it is on the opposite cycle of the tank. Some of it's in between. Um, and when, you know, plants use CO2 to grow. So if you're growing plants in your tank, you're going to remove CO2 from the tank. And uh, in turn, you'll um, oxygenate the water. Now, um, if you're doing those two things, one thing that I do particularly that not many reefers do is I actually have a wooden air stone inside my refugium. Now, people are like, well, you're going to get micro bubbles in your tank. I don't. Okay, trust me. I have uh, two bubble traps, actually three, which catch all the bubbles prior to the return line or to the return pump, so I never have any issue. But what it is is the doors on the stand are always closed, so there's no fresh air actually getting into the stand. So what I did is I have the, the pump in which the air stone is connected to, the wooden air stone by that, so you have smaller bubbles, um, is outside of the stand, so it draws fresh air from the room into the stone and now into the stand. Once I started doing that a few months ago, my pH, um, my diurn diurnal swing, so the pH swing between night and day was actually about one point. When I added that air stone, it actually came down to a half a point degree on a daily basis. So for the last 45 days, my pH has been between that um, 8.26 and 8.31, roughly, um, give or take a couple here and there for various reasons. But it's been like that for 45 days since I added that air stone. Now, is it the correct thing to do? Who knows? But it works for me. Sorry about the noise in the background. That's actually the auto top off pump that I have to replace. That's taking a shit right now. Um, all right, it's off now. So recap, you can run a line from outside to your skimmer. You can uh, grow macroalgae and you can run an air stone if you so choose, bringing fresh air into the tank. Now, say that you have all your CO2 out of the tank. Now, your pH will be directly determined by your DKH, or aka alkalinity, that you currently have in the tank. So, if you have all the CO2 out and you currently have 9, you know, 9 DKH in your tank, your pH should be 8.3. Okay? Something like that. I will link the article that I read in the description, and it has the charts that shows you, the, you know, how things work between CO2 and, um, and oxygen and how you aerate and alkalinity, all that good stuff. It's a great read, uh, really enjoyed it, and it, it helped me. So since it helped me 
I want to make sure that anybody who sees this video, it will help them. Um, one thing that I want to mention is if you are having uh, pH issues right now and you are dosing buffers, please stop dosing buffers. Uh, the only thing you're doing is just adding alkalinity into the tank and you're just bringing it through the roof, and uh, which then sets off the balance between alkalinity and calcium. And then and that's just a, a slope that you don't want to go, you know, you don't want to go down that road. And, uh, you know, it's going to trash your tank. It's going to bleach corals. It's just a big pain in the ass. So if you're adding buffers, stop doing it. Take a step back, evaluate your system as a whole, and see what you might be doing wrong. Um, bring air into your tank. That's, that's uh, you know, that's the main key. Keep your tank oxygenated, and then you're going to be fine. Um, a little fun fact here is I actually can, I can tell when there's, um, you know, when I have family members. If I'm, you know, out at work or whatever, I can tell when I have family members, anybody in my house, because my pH will drop. So if I have seven or eight people in my living room and they're all just chatting away like chatty Kathy women, um, you could tell that 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 I that there's people in my house because the pH will just plummet out of nowhere. And I'm like, hey, honey, uh, what's going on? You know, because, you know, I'm suspicious as hell, just the way it is. Uh, and uh, she's like, oh, my aunt's over, blah, 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 blah. And you can hear them all chatting in the background. Um, the pH is just, you know, dropped down like 1.9 uh, or sorry, 8.19, excuse me about that. And then that was the reason, was just there was just too many people in here sucking air out of the room and then, you know, the CO2 around the tank was just, it was too much. Um, so I thought that I would share that with you. It's interesting. Also, if you're using a, a, a monitor, like a Apex pH monitor, I've had a discussion with friends. I think it's almost a curse to be able to see your pH all the time, especially when you don't understand how pH works. You see this You see this crap just plummeting and going up and down and up and down and you're just like, why is it happening? Well, don't, don't pay so much attention to trying to chase numbers. If you're chasing numbers, pH numbers, you're just going to drive yourself insane. Trust me, I've done it. Do what I tell you to do here. Try it out. If you have any questions, let me know. And, um, you know, it's cool. You know, give it a shot. If it doesn't work, then uh, try something else. But stop adding buffers to your tank. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.